What's really nice about this Fourier method is that it, it easily scales up uh, with the, when you increase the number of, of telescopes that contribute to your uh, power spectrum. And I'm just going to highlight here the example of a three telescope interferometer. Would you, again here, I'm showing you the three telescopes labeled T1, T2, and T3, and I'm just giving you uh, a picture of what would look the interference pattern that would be produced by one such three telescope interferometer. Just like in the, in the previous case, we're going to compute the Fourier transform and plot the square modulus of that Fourier transform. Now, the one thing you have to wrap your head around is that instead of working on a one-dimensional function, here we are now working on a two-dimensional array. And so it, in the, 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 the power spectrum would have to be some kind of 3D function, which um, um, here I'm really simplifying on this plot, and I'm just highlighting uh, different islands of information that uh, just uh, um, come up uh, from the, the, the noise floor. You recognize uh, maybe some of the features of that power spectrum. We see um, six points in that power spectrum, uh, and it's a very symmetric uh, structure. Um, the symmetry properties simply come up from the fact that it is the result of a Fourier transform. And we recognize a central peak, which happens to contain um, some amount of energy, uh, which in the notations we will use to describe this case happens to be three times I naught squared. And then we have the data points, the, the, the side lobes that corresponds to specific baselines in our uh, interferometer. The first baseline that we've labeled 3, 2 in our uh, diagram corresponds to the diagonal baseline in our, um, in our plot. Uh, produces this pair of side lobes, very much like the, uh, the earlier pair of side lobes in the 1D case, and the intensity corresponding to those side lobes uh, is directly related to the um, modulus of visibility sampled by this very baseline. The same thing goes for the other two baselines, T1, T2, the horizontal baseline, again produces its own set of two uh, satellite um, peaks around the central one. And same thing, the intensity of these side lobes is directly proportional to the uh, visibility function, uh, the, the, the visibility modulus that is sampled by this uh, baseline. And the final baseline, the vertical one in our, in our case, mu31 can also be extracted just the same uh, from this. You can write the actual equation for uh, the, uh, the, the intensity distribution in your focal plane, the, uh, the fringe pattern that you see on, your, on your, the left-hand side of your screen, and you realize that it becomes a fairly complex expression here. Uh, because you have um, three uh, telescopes, you have three overimposed systems of fringes that each point in different directions. And uh, even to simplify a little bit uh, my notations here, I've used uh, capital X as a way to uh, encase the fact that uh, we're talking about a 2D coordinate system, a little x and a little y. Um, but you see that uh, in, in this image, we have now um, seven unknowns, the total intensity i naught, the three different visibility modulus, and the three different phases. And yet, all of this can easily be extracted from uh, the Fourier transform approach, where the information that is otherwise spread over the entire field of view, um, the entire detector, happens to be concentrated in a, just uh, a few key places in the, the power spectrum space. And just to show you how uh, this method can actually extend to more and more complex cases, let me show you uh, what an actual da uh, data set looks like for uh, what is called a, what is a, a, 
a nine hole non-redundant aperture mask, something that uh, is used to turn uh, an actually uh, fully functional imaging telescope into a nine uh, aperture interferometer. Now you see that uh, from the left to the right we have the nine hole aperture mask with a peculiar um, geometry that ensures that no, uh, no pair of, um, of apertures can actually be repeated uh, in, in, the, uh, in the array. In the middle you have the uh, corresponding interferogram that is produced by one such uh, nine hole aperture mask. Uh, in this case you see that uh, with nine holes you actually produce nine times eight divided by two that is 36 overlapping uh, sets of cosinusoidal functions uh, which uh, becomes a much more involving uh, computing um, problem to work to work with uh, but again the nice thing is that when you work in the Fourier uh, space counterpart the Fourier transform counterpart of that image and again produce uh, plot at the the square uh, the, the power spectrum of that image you realize that all of that information spread over a wide area of the detector again um, uh, concentrates into a series of distinct and well identified islets in in the power spectrum space. So we have, um, instead of a mess of uh, 36 overlapping systems of fringes, we end up with simply 36 well separated points in the power spectrum space where we can uh, directly sample the, the, the intensity, which we're going to relate to the uh, visibility modules for that baseline and the phase, uh, which are directly identified to the phase of our fringes. Now, while this is a, uh, potentially a, a surprisingly easy approach to, to solving a problem, there's a couple issues and a couple weaknesses that are associated to, uh, to this approach. Um, the first one, and that may not be too obvious from the image you see this, um, is that the, the, the actual interferogram, the, the central picture on, on this frame here, doesn't quite look like the uh, ideal uh, sinusoidal function that I started uh, working with. Um, in fact, there's only a finite region of that image and uh, it fits within the, the circle that you, you have right there. Uh, only over that, that little circular region of the field of view can you actually um, consider that uh, you actually see uh, sinusoidal functions overlapping in this area. Beyond that area, you begin to, uh, to, be, uh, to, to, to feel the effect of other more advanced uh, diffraction uh, effects that change the distribution of the light in your image here. Which means that um, performing the Fourier transform on that uh, and the Fourier analysis uh, on that image here somehow is going to be uh, limited uh, in, its, uh, in its power to actually extract information and that that process may introduce some biases. Now we're going to see in more detail from now on all of the, 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 the phenomena that are going to affect your capability to extract precise and accurate um, phase and visibility out of your images.